Hello, I'm Jay Manning, Chair of Eastern Washington University's Board of Trustees. It is my honor to welcome you all here today as we gather to officially administer the oath of office to our 27th President, Dr. Sherry McMahon. The investiture ceremony is a time-honored tradition in academia where the authority and symbols of the university's highest office are conferred upon the university president. This ceremony is typically done at the conclusion of the first year of a president's tenure. Before we begin today's investiture ceremony, I'd like to invite Dr. Margot Hill, Associate Professor for our Urban and Regional Planning Programs, to present Eastern's land acknowledgement. Heo putis in Sihuch, putis in Quellich, putis lich lacht, Swiss quest Ibani, Swiss in Yapensen squest, Marco Hill. Here at Eastern Washington University, we acknowledge that we are on the unceded lands of the Spokane people and that these lands were once a major trading center for the Spokanes as they shared this place and welcomed other area tribes through their relations, their history, their trade, and ceremony. The spirit, we also want to acknowledge that this land holds the spirit of place. Through its knowledge, culture, and all the original peoples since time immemorial, as we take a minute to consider the impacts of colonization, may we also acknowledge the strengths and the resiliency of the Spokanes, the Spokani, and their relatives. As we work together making decisions that will benefit all, all of our students, our faculty, our staff, our ego community, may we all do, also do so with one heart, one mind, in one spirit. We are grateful to be on the shared lands of the Spokane people, and we ask for the support of their ancestors and all relations. We ask that you recognize these injustices that forever change the lives of the Spokane people and all their relatives. We agree to work together to stop all acts of continued injustices towards Native Americans and all of our relatives. It is time for rec reconciliation. We must act upon these truths and take actions that will create restorative justice for all people. Lum lum shkomiatsahith, hui eagle, go eagles. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Now please rise if you are able for a national anthem sung by Dr. Nicole Sonbert, Eastern's Director of Voice Studies. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket the bombs bursting in air, give proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled
I'd now like to recognize members of our university leadership with me on the stage. Seated behind me are fellow Board of Trustee members Vicki Wilson, Kim Pierman Gilman, Bob Whaley, Jim Murphy, and Dr. Christine Johnson, our student trustee Shana Morgan, Dr. Jonathan Anderson, Vice President of Academic Affairs and Provost, Barb Ritchie, Vice President of University Advancement, Mary Vovis, Vice President of Business and Finance, Dr. Leah Jarnigan, Vice President of Student Affairs, Mark Baldwin, Chief of Staff, Dr. David Bowman, Dean of the College of STEM and Interim Dean for the College of Health Science and Public Health, Dr. Martha Rasky, Interim Dean for the College of Professional Programs, Dr. Florian Presig, Acting Dean of the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Puyan Lam, Professor of Sociology and Justice Studies and Chair of the Eastern Washington University Faculty Organization, Chris Gallo, Maintenance Mechanic and Eastern Washington University President of the Washington State Federation of State Employees Union, Dr. Michael Conlon, History Professor and President of the United Faculty of Eastern, Kelsey Hatch Bresick, Director of Alumni Relations, and Lucas Fira, President of the Associated Students of Eastern Washington University. And now I'd like to turn your attention to the screen for a special, special message from Washington State Governor Jay Inslee. Hi, Governor Inslee here. I uh, really want to congratulate Dr. Sherry McMahon, the 27th President of Eastern Washington University. Eastern Washington has brightened minds and built leaders since 1882, more than 116,000 Eagle alumni live all over the world, 87,000 still doing great work in our state. And I take this as evidence of the lasting connections and sense of community that has been built at Eastern. So you're in a really important role, Doctor, and I'm confident that you and every Eagle will soar even higher in the years to come. It's been important in our family since we've got an Eagle graduate. Congratulations on your finding a new home at Eastern. And let me just say in advance, because I can see the future, Congratulations on your success that I know you're going to have changing lives. Go Eagles. Thank you, Governor Inslee. Nice to hear that he has an eagle in the family. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Puyan Lam, faculty organization president, to the podium. Congratulations, President Maman on your appointment as the president of Eastern Washington University. It takes courage to lead, but what courage looks like on top is different from the courage for the rest of us. For those at the top, it takes courage to be transparent. It takes courage to reject the conventional wisdom in higher education that has been proven wrong. It takes courage for those at the top to share decision-making power and respect the autonomy of their employees. It takes courage to listen to and accept dissenting voices and criticisms. It takes courage to accept that you are imperfect and admit when you make mistakes. It takes courage to change course when we are heading to the wrong path. It takes courage to accept challenges to the status quo. Finally, it takes courage to build a university that truly practices social justice, equity, and belonging. Authentic DEI work that brings substantive and meaningful changes is not easy. It requires you to have open, honest dialogues with student activists and student leaders when they bring their criticism of the university to you. It requires you to have a bold, creative vision for the university. Authentic DI work requires you to have the will to change deeply ingrained institutional habits and worldviews that perpetuate inequities at the university. It requires you to stand up against the current political climate and defend what professors can teach in their classrooms. It requires you to fight institutional inertia and individual resistance wisely and methodically. 
I look forward to seeing your bold, courageous leadership in practice, especially how you are going to transform the university to a more just, equitable, and inclusive institution. Thank you, and now I'd like to introduce Mark Bowen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon. Friends of Eastern, it's an exciting time. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm also a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, thank you, Dr. Lam, for your words. Um, you know, we think about courage, and, and the president has already shown her courage um, as in her first year. I also think uh, we kind of forget when her courage actually started. She came here to interview. She learned about the university. She knows about regional schools, and she still took this job. So <laughs> courage started early. Um, I want to also mention her uh, family and friends that have come up here. Uh, the, I think that the energy coming out of the president's suite uh, during our homecoming game uh, uh, clearly added yards to our football team, uh, may, may have pushed us over the edge. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the president with us. I know it's probably hard, the distance that you have between you now, but we really thank you for being here and for sharing. So, um, you know, courage uh, is one thing as we face the transitions and the and the, uh, that a university can do and make. Um, today I'm speaking to you as a representative of the staff of EWU. Um, we welcome you, President, here, and we thank you for coming here and accepting the challenges of transformation. We often cite the critical role of a regional school like Eastern and how, what it plays for people and for the students that come here and how it transforms many of those families. All transformation brings with it excitement, some anxiety, maybe a little fear. But, and we hear that from our students um, all the time, that they've experienced the same things. As staff at EWU, we know that there is no task too large, there's no moment too small in support of our students. So President McMahon, the staff of Eastern Washington University welcomes you and looks forward to working with you as you press on transforming this institution as we together transform lives and the region one family at a time. So thank you. I'd like to introduce Lucas Ferry, president of the Associated Students at EWU. Lucas. Hello everyone. Starting off, I'd like to congratulate President McMahon, and I would like to say thank you for your partnership with ASWU. So I would like to lead a real quick round of applause because she has been amazing. As ASWU president, I represent our organization by bringing them opportunities from various aspects of the institution and connecting our senators with leaders across campus to better serve our student body. However, connections are only as good as the people behind them, and I can happily say that the staff, faculty, and admins of this university are routinely receptive, invested, and committed to hearing our student leaders and showing respect to their ideas and concerns. In that regard, I would like to also extend congratulations to anyone that has taken the time to listen to students and does their best to connect students to all the amazing leadership opportunities that we all have here on campus. So thank you to anyone if you have helped a student reach anything in this university. Throughout my time at EWU, I have found that our community can be characterized as one of potential. People come here to learn and grow as students, professionals, and leaders. But the potential to grow here is beyond anywhere else in the region. The opportunities to become a leader at EWU are numerous and vastly unique. This will be my third year as a member of ASWU, and I still find different organizations, clubs, programs, or research opportunities that have incredible leaders all doing drastically different things on our campus. From our leaders in Greek life to those ambitious students starting new clubs on campus or students partnering with faculty to present their novel research across the US or at our own research symposium. These leaders are all work so hard and are writing a story that will continue with them for the rest of their lives. What makes EWU such a hive for potential is those special people that help lead the leaders. A daunting job, but one that is incredibly rewarding. 
A leader of leaders works to ensure voices are heard, respected, and every leader has every resource available to them to help them achieve their goals. President McMahon embodies this idea, and I am so excited to see where she will take this institution in her tenure at EWU. Thank you, President McMahon, for being a leader of leaders, and thank you for making EWU a place of potential. And I would like to bring up the amazing Kelsey. Come on. Good afternoon. Ooh, I need to tone it down a little bit. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> My name is Kelsey Hatch Braycheck. I'm the director of alumni relations and a very proud third generation Eagle. Today we gather in celebration of a significant moment in the history of Eastern Washington University, the investiture of our 27th president, Dr. Sherry McMahon. The investiture of a new president is a pivotal event that not only marks a change in leadership, but also signifies an opportunity for renewal, growth, and a recommitment to the values that define us. As the alumni director, I'm honored to address you on this occasion representing more than 120,000 alumni worldwide who have experienced the transformative power of our university. Our alumni are the living testimony to the enduring legacy of this institution. We have witnessed its growth and evolution and are united by our shared experience, ex experiences and our unmatched school pride. Our institution stands today as a testament to the enduring power of tradition and history. We carry with us a legacy that has been shaped over decades, marked by the dedication and contributions of countless individuals who have left their mark in making this institution the place it is today. Our history is not just a relic of the past, it's a living, breathing force that fuels our school pride as it connects us to those who have come before and set the stage for those to follow. Yet it's our history and achievements that define our school pride. That, yet it's not just our history and achievements that define our school pride, it's our people. It's a sense of community that exists here. We come from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and experiences, but we are all bound by our shared love for this institution. It's the people, students, faculty, staff, and alumni who all make this place truly exceptional. Dr. McMahon is exceptional. Her strong vision for the future sets a positive tone for what lies ahead and demonstrates a forward-thinking approach. She embodies our aspirations of the institution and is committed to the university's growth and success. She is a leader who will continue to steer us forward to even greater heights. And most importantly, Dr. McMahon exemplifies all four traits of the Eastern Eagle, grit, grace, gratitude, and greatness. I know I am personally excited for the opportunity to continue to work closely with Dr. McMahon in creating opportunities for, me, for meaningful engagement between alumni and our university. Congratulations on your investiture, President McMahon. We are in support of your vision for the future and will continue to build upon the rich legacy of our institution. Together, as alumni, students, faculty, staff, and friends, of the university, we can ensure that the next chapter in our history is one of excellence, innovation, and success. Go Eags. Thank you, Kelsey. President McMahon, you have had a challenging yet rewarding first year and introduction to the history of Eastern Washington University and its dedication to the students, faculty, and staff. 26 presidents have led Eastern, starting with Noah D. Showalter in 1914. And just as he did so many years ago, President McMahon has a road ahead that will require steadfast leadership, an unwavering commitment to the continued legacy of Eastern, and a heart to unite the campus and broader community to which Eastern serves. 
It's been a privilege to work with President McMahon this past year. The relationship between a board and president can be challenging at times, but we've never doubted the passion President McMahon has for the lasting success of Eastern and the utmost commitment she has to fulfill our mission of personal transformation through excellence in learning. Just as she has demonstrated her belief in Eastern's ability to sustain greatness, we too believe in her vision and her leadership, knowing that she will do what is best for Eastern, for our talented students, and for our future. It is my pleasure and honor on behalf of the Board of Trustees to witness the presentation of the Oath of Office and Medallion to Eastern Washington University's 27th President, Dr. Sherry McMahon. President McMahon, do you solemnly affirm that you will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of President of Eastern Washington University and will, to the best of your ability, commit to fulfilling those duties with integrity, transparency, and the utmost dedication to the betterment of Eastern Washington University and the broader society it serves? I do. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. What an honor it is to stand before you today, and it's my honor to serve as the 27th president of Eastern Washington University. When I started here a year and a half ago, I had just moved from California, and when I arrived, many people warned me about the winters, <laughs> preaching caution when driving on icy roads, and encouraging me to stock up on gloves, scarves, and warm coats, and don't forget to layer. They happily discussed the beloved squirrel population, <laughs> but did not warn me that I would find families of deer eating tomatoes in my backyard. And I worked really hard for those tomatoes. See, I don't have a green thumb, but it's very hard to they're just so adorable, shoo them away. I just couldn't do it. And on my very first day of employment, in which I gave opening remarks at Hoopfest, I was quickly taught the unwritten rule of yelling, go Eags, whenever you pass by a person wearing our logo. And wow, there were a lot of Eastern logos at Hoopfest that day. <laughs> But through all those initial conversations and meetings, one thing was clear. I was immediately embraced as part of the Eastern Eagle family. And what an amazing family it is. Supportive, welcoming, gracious, and above all, proud of the institution that has stood strong for over 140 years. I've met so many wonderful alumni who, like Kelsey, are proud to have a family history at Eastern. 
And as a third generation eagle, Kelsey promotes generational pride and connection. It is so impressive. In fact, it was just a few weeks ago that I was attending an Eagle hockey game and met Michelle, a former employee and proud alumna who are in both a bachelor's and a master's degree at Eastern. And as we were talking, Michelle shared her family's connection to Eastern dating back to 1918 when her great grandmother began here. Then it was her aunt, uncle, sister, two nieces, all eagles. It was incredible to hear. And maybe, just maybe, her son will join the tradition and be a fifth generation eagle. And like Kelsey and Michelle, the importance of attending college was instilled in me in very, very early on. However, I'm a first generation college student. College wasn't a family tradition, but my parents pushed me to get an education so I could have options. They, in their own right, were very successful business owners and worked hard so I had an opportunity to do something that I was passionate about, something that moved me to serve others and serve my purpose. I am thankful for their belief in me, my future, and for all their hard work to set me on this path I'm on today. The decision to attend college required a great amount of courage and has provided more opportunities than I could ever have imagined. I'd like to take a moment now and extend my gratitude for those who have helped me get to this stage. First, thank you to the Board of Trustees for placing your trust in me to lead Eastern Washington University. Chair Manning, Thank you for your words of support and guidance for what lies ahead of us. And thank you to the dedicated faculty and staff. I did a lot of listening this past year, and your thoughts and suggestions, whether from years of experience or fresh perspectives, indicated to me that you care deeply about the future of Eastern, our stability, and our impact in the community. It will be a collective effort as we move forward. You are the lifeblood of the institution, and your determination and resiliency is inspiring. I see you, and I am grateful for your work. And then there are our students. It is my honor to be their president. When I see them at games, on campus, or at events, it never ceases to amaze me how much energy and positivity they have. Our nation's future is bright. They are going to take the home one day and transform the way we think, the way we act, and the way we do business. Truly, I can't wait to see what they accomplish. And of course, our incredible community of supporters. Thank you to the campaign cabinet, all of our generous donors, passionate Eagle fans, and the thousands of proud alumni across the world. I'd also like to take this moment to thank a few mentors who have helped me to get where I am today. My career would not be what it is today without their guidance. My greatest influence has been my colleagues in the California State University system. Many who are or were presidents, chancellors, and deans are today throughout the country making a significant difference in their universities. Thank you to those who couldn't be here today for your friendship and encouragement. Presidents Hagen, Cruz Rivera, John. Blanchard and Morales, I've learned so much from you and admire so many things about your leadership. And I also want to thank my terrific colleagues from the CSU system who have taken the time from their busy lives to be with me today. Jesse, Cesar, Dorota, and Bridget, your presence here means so much to me. Thank you. And finally, my family. My brothers, 
who always looked out for their baby sister and gave me strength, we have been through a lot. Thank you for your encouragement and unwavering support. My niece, Jenny, I mean my cousin, you will always be special to me. Thank you for saving me from the rattlesnake and always giving me a friendly horse to ride on. And of course, my kids, they're the light of my life. Hunter and his wife, Alyssa, you are gifted, beautiful people. Thank you for serving your purpose and honoring God in all that you do. And Sierra, who impresses me every day by her strong work ethic, persistence, and voice. You have an incredible talent of being direct, empathetic, and an amazing listener. I have no doubt you will be a gifted counselor if that's the path that you choose. As president, my focus is, to, is, le is on leading Eastern into the future. But I've recently spent a great deal of time looking at our shared history. I'm sure many of you in the audience know a little bit about the history of EWU, but I'll start with the basics. Eastern is a regional comprehensive public university, one of 517 across the United States, District of Columbia and US territories, which collectively educate about 4.9 million undergraduate students. And while each is a unique institution, they share a common thread, their origins as normal schools, institutions primarily focused on teacher education. And that's how Eastern evolved in 1882 the Benjamin P. Cheney Academy was born from a $10,000 gift from Mr. Ben Cheney, who had the desire to establish a learning institution in a small, safe community. In 1889, as Washington Territory became Washington State, it was renamed the State Normal School at Cheney and transformed into an institution focused on teacher training. By 1937, we were the Eastern Washington College of Education, a fully accredited four-year degree granting institution. And by 1961, it was clear that the region needed more professionals trained in various fields. So we became Eastern Washington State College. And finally, in 1977, we adapted once more to meet the growing workforce demands and became the Eastern Washington University we are today. That brief summary covers almost 141 years. There were also a couple of fires, rebuildings, closures, debates with state legislators, and a whole host of individuals who accomplished so much, including Noah Showalter, the first official president of Eastern, and the namesake of this building we're gathered in today. Still, today at EWU, we proudly carry the legacy of being a regional comprehensive university with the mission to address the evolving workforce needs of our region. We power the local economy. Our increasingly diverse communities mean we serve increasingly diverse students. We are the engine of social mobility, particularly for the growing number of first-generation students. And our alumni stay in the region, which is demonstrated by the fact that over 44,000 Spokane County residents are Eastern graduates. Our mission is to provide our students with learning excellence and a transformational experience. It is a mission I am extremely proud of, but it's not always an easy task. It requires the university leadership to reflect and listen, pursue bold ideas, and take courageous action in order to get things done. For Eastern, our history is not in our name, which has changed over the years. 
It's in our mission to serve our students to the best of our ability. Let me pause for a moment because that part of our mission, personal transformation, that resonates so strongly with me. As I mentioned earlier, my parents instilled in me the value of a college education, even though I was a first-generation student. For me, college provided a world of opportunities, enabling me to explore my passions, acquire knowledge, grow, and ultimately become the person I am today. A few years into my studies, I started working with a professor collecting hair samples in people to look at lead burden. Yes, lead, the element that you hear about in lead paint that causes all sorts of health hazards, including nervous system and kidney damage and, and brain development. The findings revealed that individuals living near freeways had elevated lead burdens. And unfortunately, those were often disadvantaged, low-income communities. Early on, I became acutely aware of the health disparities that exist between different socioeconomic groups. These inequities have always troubled me. The fact that not all individuals receive equitable treatment and support. It was because of that research and personal growth that today, as an administrator in higher education, my passion is worth working with first generation and underserved students to propel them forward and create opportunities for their transformation. For these humble, kind, and hardworking students, it not only changes their lives, but also positively impacts their families and the communities we serve. When people, whether they are businesses, alumni, or supporters, give back to Eastern, they invest not just in a name, but in the opportunity we provide to all students, regardless of their backgrounds or experiences. We enable them to reach their full potential and experience the same transformative journey I had. Since my first day on campus, I've had the privilege of meeting many of our supporters. Alumni, in particular, share great stories about their, ex their experiences at Eastern, remembering their friends and the sense of family they felt as a student. It's those stories that keep them willing to support the Eastern we are today. And our many supporters who didn't attend Eastern they recognize how valuable we are to regional communities and to our students. They know our graduates will go on to do great things, advance research, and keep our communities thriving. I'd like to share a few stories of giving that stand out from those who have recently supported our mission. And I'll start with the staff member who asked to, be remain, to remain anonymous. This person is a longtime Eastern employee who, when making his gift, spoke about their strong belief in what we do, our values as an institution, and vision for the future. And coupled with the desire to see students succeed, they generously donated Microsoft shares originally purchased in 1987. Collectively, their gift totaled more than $600,000, which will be used for student scholarships. I'm also extremely proud of our comprehensive campaign cabinet, whose members not only volunteer their time, but also generously support our institution. Bill Simers, who chairs the cabinet, and his wife, Renee, have made a $1.5 million estate gift, bringing their total giving to $2 million in support for retention scholarships. Bill and Renee, can you please stand if you're here? I know you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
This is a wonderful story of someone who volunteered and chaired our foundation board many years ago and still believes in the role EWU played in his life and the regional impact our university continues to make in our communities. And I'd be remiss if I didn't call out Dr. Bill Youngs, a much loved history professor at Eastern for over 50 years. Dr. Youngs, can you please stand or wave? We so appreciate you. Thank you. Dr. Youngs has hit the trifecta of giving. He gives his time, his talent, and his treasure to Eastern and has inspired and transformed the lives of countless students. Not only does he have the Bill Young's endowment, which supports student expenses related to research, publishing, and tuition, but he continues to give to various funds every year. Thank you, Bill. Each of these gifts speak to the belief and support in the mission of Eastern Washington University. And this support is driving our efforts to create a new strategic plan for Eastern, which will carry us through the next five years. It will set goals, strategies, and investments in order to close equity gaps in graduation rates, increase our regional impact, and ensure all students, whether they're first generation or part of a family tradition, to find success and a sense of belonging as eagles. Eastern Washington University has a remarkable past, and a strong strategic plan will ensure it remains successful far into the future. To remain resilient, we must adapt, grow, and refocus ourselves to meet the evolving needs of our diverse student body. I'd like to share a short story from a graduate student that demonstrates not just the evolving needs of our students, but the compassion our faculty and staff display every day. Quote, Michelle from Student Support and Accommodation Services changed my life this quarter. I experienced several successive hardships that resulted in me being homeless and without support when school started. I chose to live in my vehicle and tried the best to overcome my circumstances. But between not having a place to park or sleep, a vehicle that continually broke down, and exhausting my finances on vet bills and vehicle repairs, I struggled to make it through October. Michelle helped me map out a plan to stay in school while she worked on getting me a housing grant that could help me pay for an apartment. She helped me navigate various resources on campus like the library, the gym, the food pantry that got me through each day. I ended up living in my vehicle from September 1st to December 1st while attending my first quarter of graduate school but I was able to move into an apartment on December 1st that is three blocks from campus. I no longer have to worry about driving or the freezing cold. The housing grant was able to pay for my rent, deposit, the bills I have not paid, and enough food to fill my fridge until I received a paycheck from my new job on campus. I also finished the quarter with a 3.77 grade point average. If it wasn't for Michelle and the housing grant, I would have never stayed in graduate school. Words could not describe how grateful I am, end quote. Our students, like this young man who graciously permitted me to share his story, Need, need us to continue making connections, providing mental health resources, and creating an improved sense of belonging. They need EWU to be its best every day. And we need to ensure our next strategic plan and our next 140 years 
continues to deliver on our promises. We are the region's comprehensive university. We make a difference. And we must share our story proudly and loudly to reach not just the region, but the entire state and Pacific Northwest. The countless stories of student achievement, the stories that inspire others and inspire us to keep going, the stories that demonstrate our excellence and perseverance, the stories that show we care. Our history proves we are capable of adapting, learning, and holding on to our mission. We embrace change. We are Eastern Eagles. In closing, I can't express my gratitude enough, my gratitude and honor to serve as president of Eastern Washington University. We have a bright future, a clear path, and a community of support that will continue to propel us forward. Thank you, and go Eags!